my name is James. Hello, my name is Thuis. And uh, welcome to uh, the first lesson of uh, Hello Trumpet. And uh, well, not entirely the first lesson because you probably watched the movie of uh, me and Thuis uh, when we went shopping for this uh, brand spanking new yeah. main trumpet that I'm, uh, well, I haven't really played on it yet, but we're going to, of course. Are you happy with your new yeah, trumpet, bro? Yeah, I'm very bro? happy with it, man. It's so shiny. Nice. I like it. It's really shiny. Um, uh, but uh, before we start playing, I think it's, uh, it's a good question. We also discussed it in the book, of course. Uh, you know, how does the trumpet work exactly? Because I see a lot of uh, valves and bend the pipe and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can start by uh, having you explain, you know, how does this thing work? How does it, how does it make sound? Because I think it's good to understand that first well, thing. Well, the basic uh, concept of making sound through a trumpet is blowing air through a small hole in your lips while you uh, put the mouthpiece on it. And by blowing air through your lips, your lips start to vibrate, which we call buzzing. And we will get into that later. Mm -hmm. But by the vibrating lips and the air going through the uh, trumpet, the sound starts to resonate. And that's what we hear as a trumpet sound. Actually, we're looking to the 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 end product of uh, you know uh, of a real big development of the trumpet because in the older days like in the medieval period mm -hmm. trumpet used to be just one straight pipe mm -hmm. no valves or, or extra pipes or whatever and you could only play a couple a handful of notes and which we call nature tones mm -hmm. which we can still play on the trumpet those are the tones where we don't use any valves or any extra things on the trumpet Show, 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 show. I will play. Mm -hmm. They used to play with one hand. Don't play with <laughs> one hand, but this is just to show how they used to make these sounds. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, mankind is always looking for new possibilities when he came up with something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, there was a period that uh, uh, the composers wanted to write more extensive uh, pieces for trumpet mm -hmm. hence they came up actually uh, uh, the inventor of the saxophone uh, really? came up with a valve system for the trumpet thank you mr saxophone <laughs> oh, that's good name. Uh, adolf sax uh -huh, was yeah. his name uh -huh. and he came up with the valve system now what the valve system is is that uh, you see three valves here which you can press mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now by pressing a valve the air gets guided through an extra pipe, which we see here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is of the first valve. We see a small one here of the second valve. And a larger one, I will turn it around, a larger one attached to the third valve. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now what the general rule is, is that the longer the air uh, has to go, the longer the route is, the air has to go through the trumpet, the lower the sound gets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So by pressing one valve, you can lower the nature tone you're playing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, uh, we see size-wise, you see uh, uh, an average one, a small one, and a longer one. Mm -hmm. This one of the first valve will lower your nature tone by one tone, mm -hmm. one note, we will say for now. Yeah. This one will lower it for a, a half note, Mm -hmm. And the third one will lower it for one and a half. Oh, that's actually interesting because the, the the if you look at the at the length, it's also I think very obvious visually that this is like exactly. half a hole because it's twice as it's about twice as long, exactly. and the uh, and the last one it seems you know one and a half like what the first two would be together. So that's like a half a hole and, and one exactly. and a half. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. Because the the smarter people already counted that if you press one and two you will lower the nature tone by one and a half note. The same with uh, uh, three. So you can make more combinations. Okay, now we will apply this valve system to our nature tones to get us all the notes in between each nature tone. I will use combinations with the valves to every time lower the, no the, the note we play with one half note. Check it out for yourself. Now, as you heard, we can fill up the gaps between each nature tone 
because uh, without these valves we could play only six or seven notes and now we just added a whole lot of them. If we put these notes in order from uh, starting on the lowest one we can play on the trumpet which is of course all the valves uh, pressed mm -hmm. because we can't uh, make the trumpet any lower than that. Uh, we will get a chromatic scale. We will dive into it uh, specifically uh, later, mm -hmm. but I'll just play it for you so you can hear uh, what possibilities we added to the trumpet by using the valve system. <laughs> a whole bunch of notes uh, we can play on the trumpet by extending our nature tones with this valve system okay so uh, so summarizing uh, uh, yep. of course that was the question you know how does the trumpet work is that really it's it's one pipe and uh, the, the different uh, the different valves add some length to the pipe so you're really just playing nature tones with your mouth really through the trumpet and then using the valves we can lower each nature tone a number of times uh, until we get to the next nature tone uh, in, in the line so to speak and that's how we get all uh, the different notes so when we're playing the trumpet we're really with our mouth in the mouth please are sort of not exactly uh, uh, playing the nature tones and it's with your fingers that you're creating the rest of the notes so that's a good distinction I think to yeah. understand for the students there okay man so uh, we know how the trumpet works now uh, so I guess uh, we're getting to the exciting moment of how do we make the first note exactly. on the trumpet. So uh, let's get started with that. How do we do it? Well, there are two uh, ways to look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are methods, trumpet methods, yeah. um, which really ex uh, uh, focus on the buzzing. Mm -hmm. And um, actually we are going to use a slight different yeah. approach. Mm -hmm. There is an approach that says, okay, you have to buzz your lips, which means uh, make the sound of a humming, uh, humming bee, mm -hmm. which goes like this. Nice humming bee. They say you have to do it before even touching the mouthpiece and then uh, bringing the mouthpiece to your mouth, mm -hmm. which uh, will sound like this. <laughs> Uh, find this and actually a lot of trumpet players find this uh, uh, a little effort that you shouldn't even uh, have to be making because when you just gently uh, blow air through the uh, trumpet mm -hmm. and the mouthpiece and uh, uh, make the uh, hole of your uh, uh, between your lips which we call the the aperture mm -hmm. and uh, the whole lip uh, and mouth muscles we call embouchure mm -hmm. which you will read in the book um, if you just gently bro blow air through the trumpet mm -hmm. and uh, uh, make the hole a, a bit smaller, mm -hmm. sound will uh, just eventually uh, and naturally come out. So you don't have to make this eff eff extra effort mm -hmm. by uh, buzzing your lips, but just blow air through the mouthpiece in a really gentle, relaxed motion, which will go like this. Mm -hmm. Now, as you heard, I'm I'm starting with just blowing air, relaxed, mm -hmm. blowing air through the trumpet, and then I'm just slightly adjusting the opening of my mouth. I'm mm -hmm. making it a bit smaller, which makes the air go faster. And I'm not uh, really visualizing or, or or really physically focusing on. Okay, I'm gonna buzz now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But by blowing these air through the lips, the lips just automatic, automatically start to buzz a little bit. Yeah, I, I found I think this too actually. The, because you told me of course in The Hague uh, when we were at Atelier Pfeiffer, you, you told me this already. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really quite a difference as a beginner because I was researching and you know, trying some things. And, uh, and I also found the buzzing uh, technique that, that some, te some techniques, some books say you have to buzz. And it takes a lot of uh, power. You you just have to put quite a few like that's a whole thing that you have to sort of learn. And uh, and I found, as you said, that if you really you know sort of the the not not really like a kissing, but you know, like gently 
creating this very little hole to blow up. Which is trumpet up, man. Which is really, oh sorry, which is, goes really naturally. And to just, really as if you're trying not to make any sound, but just to blow air through, which you would naturally do. There's no, nothing, no trick about that. And then just slowly make the hole a tiny bit smaller and smaller. You'll just come to a natural point where the sound will just come out and you're not really yeah. doing anything. Just. And it's totally, totally natural and totally effortless. So, which is, I think, why we uh, sort of go for that. Which we can't stress enough, because you probably saw some uh, videos of trumpet players like Dizzy Gillespie or Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and the first thing which uh, start a, start a students who start playing the trumpet do is blow as many, as much air as they, they can pos uh. possibly produce of their uh -huh. body yeah. in a trumpet. Like... <laughs> But as you can see, and probably hear, uh -huh. the sound sucks and it will take a lot of time playing this this way uh -huh. to even get the sound uh, It's sound also something that, cool. that the, like the saxophone players do that too. The, the, because the saxophone is such a gentle instrument, you really don't have to blow very hard at all. It's a very controlled exactly. way of, of blowing, but the beginner students always, there's just this sort of this myth out, out in the world that the trumpet and saxophone and probably all all brass really instruments, instruments you have to blow super hard and it's actually not true it's a, it's a very you know gentle you need a little bit more power to do it longer for half an hour an hour sure you'll get tired because that's something that most people never ever do uh, but it's very a, really a gentle breath so for the trumpet too it's not about blowing really hard but just really relaxed so maybe we can do it with the with the guy yeah. at home yeah pick up your trumpet mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we already showed you how to hold the trumpet. Yeah, in, in the book. Maybe we should do that uh, in, the, in the video too, just a little bit. Uh, maybe you can show them uh, of course. how to hold it. Well, let's start with the left hand. You've got mm -hmm. five fingers. Um, uh, you've got a little hook here mm -hmm. on almost any trumpet, which uh, your middle finger can go through. Mm -hmm. And you've got two fingers left, which can support this uh, uh, pipe of the third third valve. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your index finger which can support the lead pipe and you've got your thumb here which can uh, be at the back side of the valve holder. Mm -hmm. Now on most trumpets, you can show on your trumpet, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. you've got a, a ring here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately on my trumpet it broke off <laughs> by playing too much and pressing too much but uh, uh, this is where your thumb will go of your left hand. So it will look like this. Yeah. And we will turn the trumpet around. We've got five fingers again, probably. We've got our pinky finger be, uh, uh, underneath, in the, uh, underneneath the pinky hook. Mm -hmm. And we've got three fingers for the valves. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll turn it around right. again. One, two, three. And then we've got a thumb left, which can also support the uh, lead pipe, which I will show here. Yeah. You see? And I think also good to stress because you have you have this ring with your with your index finger yeah and i actually have it with my ring because i've got really big hands so it's also this also something you know generally most people will do it one way or another but also good to stress you know find your own right way to hold it because this you know, is maybe, a guideline this yeah. is not the like, only way if you feel like well you know i i really think it feels natural for me to put my finger there as long as it feels comfortable in your hands and you of course you've got your you know your your first year your index and your your second and your third on the on the valves uh, that's of course important make sure your pinky's here for the support and that you've got you know a finger here where, which you can comfortably sort of control that thing because you sometimes you have to slide them a little exactly. bit exactly uh, that's important but for the rest make sure that it feels very comfortable uh, for you and the 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 this space of adjusting is more in your left hand your right hand is pretty much set because you've got your pinky hook and you've got to support the lead pipe mm -hmm. and you've got the valves yes. but you know the left hand fool around a bit yeah this is just a guideline and it's important when uh, uh playing or starting to play move it al around a little bit mm -hmm. and feel if it feels comfortable you know yeah. It has to feel relaxed and no fingers have to be like stuck in between um, uh, pipes. Just feel, yeah. it has to feel comfortable. Good, let's, well, let's get, get to the first note, man. Yeah. Closer to the first note. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As we stressed, don't put too much effort in it. Just be relaxed, 
Shoulders down. Yeah. Use a good amount of air. Sit up straight. Sit up straight, of course. We'll get into that later too. But uh, yeah. And just blow air. Now what we're going to do now is just gently blow air through the trumpet. And then we're going to uh, adjust the whole of your lips, the aperture. We're going to adjust it a little bit, make it smaller, mm -hmm. uh, which will make the air go faster. And sound will naturally come out. Yeah. Okay. But Let's I think it. we let uh, we. It's fun to let the uh, the viewers pick up your trumpet yeah, pick now. Up your trumpet now yeah. and let's do it together. So we're just gonna take a, a healthy amount of air. We're gonna blow air through the trumpet, and we're gonna make the hole smaller until sound comes out. Okay. Let's One, do it. Two. Okay, so congratulations. That was your uh, first note. Yeah, your first note, man. Congratulations. By the way, don't good. don't worry if it doesn't come out the first attempt. Just mm -hmm. give it some time. Yeah. And remember to focus on being. Let it be a relaxed thing. Don't don't think okay, it doesn't come out the first time. I'm gonna force it out yeah. now. Just really stay relaxed. relaxed. Really relaxed. And exactly. uh, I think we're getting to the end of this uh, video because this is the video really about the first note. And yeah. well, you've done that successfully now. So great job. And. Uh, uh, as an exercise, I would say uh, play just this first note. It's very tempting to start playing a lot of notes right away, which of course is fine if you do. You but probably did anyway. You probably did anyway. You'll, you'll do it anyway. But uh, but best also to really put some attention and some effort into just playing this one note for longer, so you can get it a little bit steady. So at first, you know, with me too, it was like. <laughs> It's really sort of uh, squeaky or whatever and try to really just play that one note starting with just the air So I'll sit straight up again As you can hear mine's not that straight uh, uh, too because I don't play the trumpet in that way uh, also the same as you but Try to get it to a sort of a steady uh, point and maybe you can tell them a little bit about tonguing because that's yeah. I think a good exercise too to start well, with. Well, uh, to, to sum up with the uh, steady tone, this is all in the air, mm -hmm. in a, a good air support and a steady air support. Mm -hmm. And really try to focus on, 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 on keeping this steady and keeping this on the same tuning, not that it goes up and down like... <laughs> Try to keep one tone. Mm -hmm. Now we, in this exercise, we just let it come out uh, naturally mm -hmm. by first blowing uh, air. If this note, if you've got this note more more or less uh, narrowed down, and you've got it steady, we can try to uh, add our tongue to this by tonguing a note. This means we start a note right away by saying. Tch. Like saying ta or t or a two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which will sound like this. So really, just simply using your tongue to to break up the air by saying ta or just touching the top of your your mouth or the top of your lips bit different for everyone what is the most uh, comfortable place to touch it but you'll you'll figure that out on your own by just doing it and uh, and that's that's tonguing so that's really starting a note right off the bat i think those two things are great first exercises really put 15 or 20 minutes in today of just playing that one steady note and uh, and trying to find a comfortable way of tonguing uh, for yourself and then in the next lesson lesson two we're going to have uh, to actually do the embouchure uh, workshop where we'll really go into all the different things that go into making your tone really uh, beautiful like your posture and your how yeah. do you use your lips and all these sort of uh, more uh, more detailed things so we'll work on your tone a little bit in the next video but for now uh, you know congratulations on your first note great job and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson of hello trumpet